Hello friends and welcome back to 8th Wonder Entertainment. My name is Tyra and this video is going to be based around storytelling. But mostly I'll be giving you tips and tricks on how to come up with ideas, how to make your characters a little bit more realistic, and then towards the end I'll delve briefly into the three act structure in hopes that it can help you with your writing down the line. So if this is something you're interested in, please stay tuned. All right, so when you're coming up with ideas or feel stuck in a rut, my best piece of advice would be to always look back on your own personal experiences. Or you can also take inspiration from the people around you. To uplift their voices, you can tell their stories. An example of this is when Remy wrote his short, The Unexpected. After his time in the military, he briefly volunteered for different organizations based around human trafficking. And though he helped them, he wanted to spread awareness. So he created a movie which actually just premiered at the Bronze Lens Film Festival in Atlanta last Tuesday. Another thing you want to do is think outside the box. When you're coming up with stories, you can get inspiration from anywhere. One thing a professor used to tell me was to bring a mini journal with me whenever I traveled because you never know when an idea might pop up. Keep your head held high and take in your surroundings, the noises, the smells, because these elements that help ground you in your situation can be used to help transport your audience when you're trying to create a new world. Explore your thoughts. Even some of the wackiest ideas could be fruitful. Two of the scripts that I wrote throughout college were based off of things that I wished I had when I was a teenager. One being a story called Changes, which is based around a teenage boy who would do anything to get the attention of his crush. Very bare bones and basic, I understand, but an exciting element that I added was that there was a machine that actually could change a person's features. Where did this idea originate from? Well, when I was a teenager and used to wake up in the morning in hopes that I could change my hair or eye color. Lastly, when you have an idea, let it unravel naturally. It can be very easy to get lost when you're trying to have your vision come to life. So whenever you feel stuck, always revert back to your original idea because now you might have a new perspective and can view it in a different lens. So like I said, ideas can come from anywhere and it's inside of you too. Now that we're done with that, let's get into characters. And first things first, you do not want to make your characters flat. You should have a clear protagonist and a clear antagonist. The thing is, your antagonist doesn't always have to be a physical being either. Instead, it's just an opposing force. One thing that I was told throughout college when creating characters is that they should be good but flawed. And get this, they don't per se have to be likable, but they do need to be understandable for your audience. So when you're creating these people, what makes them unique and what is their juice or grit? A great way to help you develop your characters is by creating an emotional biography for each one. Now what this is, it allows you to delve into their background, understand what makes them upset, happy, etc. When you have this ability to understand their background and their emotions, then it will become easier for you to guide them through your story. Because now you know how they will react in a given situation. In each character, there's going to be an obvious and physical agenda versus an internal one. Their wants versus their needs. Going back to my changes story, my main protagonist's want was to get the attention of his crush. But what he needed to do was to accept himself and be comfortable within his own skin. Also, don't avoid self-awareness with your characters. If there's something that you can pick up on, most likely your audience can too. Make them as realistic as possible. What is the truth? Do not be afraid to push your character out of their comfort zone. So from here, we can now start creating your story, or at least elements of it. And before I get into this, everyone has their own creative process, so take it with a grain of salt. Now, let's talk about just some basic components that you should have when you're creating your story. What is the subject material? What is the main storyline? What is your theme and spine, the hidden message that you're trying to convey by telling this story? What is your plot? What are some mechanics that help drive the events forward to your end goal? Basic story organizations, like is this a linear story, episodic? Is it told through flashbacks? What is the theme? What is the setting? All of these are important attributes. Lastly, what is the style and genre that you're going for? Because within each genre, there are certain notes that need to be hit. Let's get into a basic rundown of the three-act structure. 
One, the setup, two, the confrontation, and three, the resolution. So what you wanna develop within your setup or act one is the status quo while also establishing your protagonist. Here you wanna create a clear binary of what is normal and what is going to be different. Also your theme will be brought up and an inciting incident that will drive your character on your main storyline and show them that they are not going back to the world they knew before. Now let's get into act two. This is when you can have a little bit more fun in games and create roadblocks for your character to have to go over as they try to find the answer to the question brought up in act one. You can also start developing B, C, and D subplots within your story. This will allow for more conflict and tension. In this section, you will also be hitting on your midpoint, which will answer the question, but in a way that your character wasn't expecting. So now they have to turn back into themselves and reflect on who they are and the point of their mission. Next, you have act three, where your character is pushed to their final challenge. In this, you sometimes have a twist as well. And from this, you'll have your final resolution. Pretty much your character has completed their journey. And even if the world hasn't changed, they have changed for the better. Some advice that I've garnered through my research and throughout college is to be patient with your story. Take it step by step. You do not need to rush to the end, but you should have an end goal. And it'll become a little bit easier to figure out what steps you need to take to get them to that point. Now, don't worry. When you're creating a story, there's gonna be multiple drafts that come out of it. Just like, like I said in the beginning, allow your idea to unravel naturally. Now that I'm done with the basic overview of the three act structure, and if that's something you want me to go a little bit more in depth with, as well as what the eight sequences are and how they fit in, that can be another video. Just comment down below if that's something you're interested in. Before I depart, I wanna raise a few questions to you that might help you with your story development. What genre is this? Is it a love or buddy story? What is your inciting incident and how does it drive your plot forward? What are your subplots and how does it add to your story? Does it ever intersect with your main storyline? Is there enough conflict? How can you build suspense? Is there a clear beginning, middle, and end? And what is your climax? Is it noticeable enough for your audience? Does your ending feel surprising or inevitable? And lastly, what is the clear resolution or revelation for your protagonist? Remember, every detail should contribute to the whole. I hope this helped you and wishing you the best on your storytelling. Now get out there and start creating.